It's been a while since I played a city builder game. I played SimCity, City Skyline, Civilization 6, which is not really a city builder game, but it kind of feeds into my desire to make a world that feels good to look at. I lose most of the time, but my city looks good. Sort of. Frostpunk kinda goes into this as well. It's a good city builder game and it has survival elements that tie into its story campaigns and achieving that makes my heart just ooze with happiness. I love city builder games, I love survival games, and I really love games with narratives that push you to do better. And Frostpunk feels exactly that. And so to help you guys if it also are planning to try this game for yourselves, I made this video. The rules, the guidelines, or simply the do's and don'ts. This is... Frostpunk is a city builder survival game developed and published by 11-Bit Studios. It was released on Microsoft Windows on April 2018 and was released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on October 2019. That's what Wikipedia said. A better description is that it's a survival game with the skin of a city builder. And I can't stress this enough, it's a survival game first and foremost. Why am I telling you this? Because there exists no random events in the game. In the six story campaigns that the game has, it's all scripted. Everything that will happen from the start of the playthrough to the end of it will be exactly the same. That's 10 hours per campaign, totaling into 60 hours. There's also an endless mode, which is good, but the gameplay will feel extremely repetitive and ironically enough, it still feels that it lacks replayability. I have beaten the two campaigns out of the six it has, played through the endless mode, researched about this game, and I found out that the other four campaigns will feel exactly the same, despite the new story differences. And with that, I just can't bring myself to play what the rest of the game has to offer. Now, I still pretty much love the experience and I like the game. I truly do, and it will fill you with dread and hopelessness the same way this war of mine gave you mainly because it's from the same developers. I played the game for 23 hours, which is usually not enough for me to discover the whole game, but it is enough for me to learn the ins and outs of the game, I think. So here it goes. Frostpunk is a narrative-heavy game filled with choices that will affect the outcome of your city. And while it does give the game depth in regards to your decisions and how it will affect your city's citizens, as a survival game or as a city builder game, it just doesn't have the replayability that other games within its genre has. And with that, here's all the tips and tricks I've gathered, thought of, and found online. <clears throat> it's, hmm, it's hard to speak when you just ate. There are many resources in the game, but the most you're gonna worry about are these four primary resources that you're gonna be micro <laughs> that you're gonna be micromanaging the whole playthrough. These are coal, wood, food, and steel. Invest on mining early on in the game. Coal is the most important resource in the game, and without it, your city will rapidly die. You'll still die without food or healthcare, but coal should always be your main priority. The first buildings you'll ever build will require wood. You'll be able to gather these from wood crates scattered in the world or frozen trees which will require a sawmill or a wall drill to get. While the sawmill is useful when gathering wood, in the long run it'll pretty much be useless when you run out of it. It's a good starter if you really need it, but don't expect it to be useful forever, as you will run out of frozen trees relatively quickly. The best way to gather wood is to use wall drills. You'll never run out of wood and I believe it's a better investment than using a typical sawmill. With the charcoal kiln, wow, that's a, that's a hard thing to say. With the charcoal kiln, you can turn wood into coal for extra fuel. I advise not completely relying on this method as you will still need wood to help build most things in the game, but it definitely does help if you need some quick fuel. Steel will only be necessary later in the game. Focus on gathering wood and coal for the most part and leave two to three workers gathering steel. You don't need it yet, but when you do, you'll have enough to build your first whatever it is you're gonna build. I do highly suggest that you use it to build a steelworks building if you see there's not much steel left lying around in your area, or a wall drill to completely secure you from running out of wood. To get food, you'll need to build a hunter's hut, hunter's hangar, or hot house. I don't know why I said it like that. I advise only building as many as you need. It's actually fairly easy to stock up on food depending on how many people you have with you. However, they will only produce raw food, which you can't really eat yet, so build a cookhouse to properly convert them to food rations. 
Every resource has a space limit. It's best to keep on checking on this as you can easily get overwhelmed with resources, which is actually very good, but it also means that you should move some of your workers to resources not as full. A resource depot can easily fix this, just make sure you don't build more than you actually need. Do not put your heaters next to the cemetery, or whatever it is you decided to place your corpses. Don't ask why, just don't do it. Think long term. Build multiple workshops early which will speed up the unlocking of tech. More tech will lead to more buildable resource gatherers which is always good. Keep your inhabited buildings warm. This will not only make them happy but will also prevent them from getting sick which in turn can cause even more problems. Some buildings have features that needs to be manually activated. You can find them after clicking on said building and is generally found under the building's name. They are usually really useful in exchange for more resources. Build only structures you know you would absolutely need. Resources are scarce at the start of the game. Don't waste resources. Build one hunter's hut and one cookhouse at the start of the game. Most of the time, that's all- Why did my voice go- What? <laughs> Most of the time, that's all you really need for the first few hours. Only build a second one or a better one, like a hunter's hangar, only when you really do need one. Back to the workshop, always make sure that it's always running in the daytime. Constant development is key and it also makes sure that time is not wasted. Some buildings need engineers instead of workers. If you run out of engineers, make sure that those engineers are working on buildings specifically for engineers. Don't hire engineers to work on gathering fuel unless you really need to, or you have a spare engineer. Make sure that your buildings are connected to roads, and the roads are all connected to other roads. Your buildings will not work if they're not. Upgrade your technology tree to level 2 as soon as you can afford it. There are a lot of buildings and skills extremely useful on level 2. Actually, scratch that. You need to be on level 2 if you want to make sure your city survives. You don't need to be on level 3 right away, but when you do, it'll be because you need to upgrade the heat generated by your, well, generator. Dismantle buildings you don't actually need anymore. They'll free up workspace and will give you some resources in the process. A good example of this is the lumber mill or sawmill. When you're out of lumber, just get rid of it. As days pass by, you will need to upgrade how much heat your generator provides. Do not spend more coal than you actually need. That's a general tip for all survival games. If you don't need the extra heat, do not expel more of it, it will just consume more resources. Steam hubs are extremely useful if you want to increase the range of heat that your generator provides. It can use up more coal though, so make sure you can provide more than it needs to function. You can set up steam hubs to only produce heat when it's working time. Do so when it comes to buildings uninhabited during the night. Steam hubs don't stack bonuses, so don't place them next to each other. Pick your laws carefully. Every law has a designated pros and cons, and it's a good idea to think about these in the long term when building your city. Only enact laws you actually need. Like I said, laws has bro- bro- what? what like I said, laws has both pro- what the hell? What like I said, laws has both pros and cons, and if you really don't need that said pro, then that one con may ruin the game for you. The emergency shift is great. Yes, it does have some cons into using it, but when push comes to shove and we need more resources, that emergency shift, emergency shift, god damn it. That emergency shift, em god, stop. That emergency shift, law, <laughs> may just save your city from dying. Under your screen, you'll find hope and discontent. Every law that you appoint, decisions you do, and every structure you build can cause this to either go up or down. The goal is to keep your hope up and discontent down. This is actually pretty obvious, but I think it's best that I might as well leave this here. Just to remind everyone that, again, this game is a survival game, and every choice that you do can impact your city. Keep your promises as much as you can, and only make them if you know it's possible. Issues will often show up during your playthrough, and a reply is necessary. Whatever your response is, it will be a promise, and if you don't keep that promise, the game will give you a huge portion of discontent, and that's something you don't want. Halfway through the game, you'll be given an option to choose how you want to manage your citizens, through fate or order. For me, there's not really a better choice here, you can either go one way or the other. They're fairly different from each other, and I highly suggest that you just roleplay it. I'm more like an order kind of guy, but that's just me. 
Assign more than one scouting party. Two is good and three is enough. They will explore outside your city looking for supplies, steam cores, and even more survivors. Using automatrons to run coal mines are effective, but it is also very risky. Automatrons need to constantly refuel once they're out of fuel. And if they run out of fuel while you're already almost out of coal, then that would cause a lot more problems than it's worth. Automatrons are good, but it's best to micromanage this and check how much fuel it has left. Optimize your scouts. This might sound really bad, but don't let them go home unless they absolutely need to. This will make it so that when they do go home, you have most likely gathered a lot of resources and it will be more time efficient. Also, if you get into a situation that your scout might die, most of the time, they will. And it's not worth it if they already have a bunch of resources on them. If you're new to survival games or city builder games, the best thing you can do is play the main campaign with the easy difficulty. I play a lot of survival games and I play a lot of city builder games, but for some reason, I just can't beat this game even when playing on normal. I don't know if it's just difficult, maybe I'm just dumb, but I'm pretty sure it's the latter. Either way, if you are new to these types of games, I repeat, play it on easy. This game is hard. Pause the game. You will need to pause the game to make better decisions. It's there for a reason. It's always a good idea to pause the game when something bad happens or when you get overwhelmed with decisions. Decide on what you want to do and stick with it. Do you want to survive or have a good looking city? Maybe that's why I had a hard time playing this game. If you just want to survive, then the game can get easier for you since you don't have to worry about little things like symmetry and what buildings goes with other buildings. I'm weird like that. If you do want to make a good looking city, you're gonna have a harder time since you also have to worry about your city, you know, dying. I'm pretty sure that's why, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm pretty bad at this game. Here's a list of all the shortcut keys to help with the navigation of the game. You don't necessarily need this, but it will help a lot when micromanaging. Roleplay it. I don't know I've said this before, but you have a way better time with the game if you act as if you really are the leader of these people. You'll also feel more immersed with your choices. So, there's that. Like I said, play the first campaign with the easy difficulty and read the tutorials carefully. This video is probably the least informatic video I've ever done and I feel like this video, long as it may be, may not be enough. With that said, I advise that you read this beginner's guide made by Imperator Davies for Frostpunk. If you have time for it, this is hands down one of the best beginner's guides I've ever found in a single video game. Not too in-depth that it becomes a chore to read, but not too concise that you can't see tips that you don't already know. He actually did a really good job writing this, and I hope this helps you as much as it helped me. It had a lot of pictures too, so that's a plus for me. I'm dumb. And slow. There's also this reddit thread. If all fails, just restart and play a game game what the just restart and play again this time you'll have knowledge on the events that will happen in the future and hopefully you'll do better this time around and that's it this video is quite shorter than my usual beginner's guides i also feel like i stuttered a lot more in this video i should shouldn't i be like improving rather than getting worse hmm that's not good. I'm working on trying new stuff for the channel, learning about new stuff, adding new stuff. It's fun. What do you think about Frostpunk? Do you feel the same way I did? I I do think that I should have spent more time with it. I just can't, I really just can't bring myself to play the game more. Comment below and yes, I do read the comment section. And if you have more tips, I highly, highly suggest that you leave a comment below. Games continually gets updated and some of the tips and tricks I've placed here might be outdated for people well by the time for uh, by that time other people have said <laughs> uh, okay like i was saying games continually gets updated and some of the ticks the ticks the tips and tricks i've placed here might be updated by the time other people watch it i hate this video like the video if you don't dislike it and dislike if you don't like it share it with your friends and if you do like it consider subscribing to the phantom heart for more and click on that notification bell to be reminded of my future videos it really does help a lot i'm sis and thank you for watching 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, I forgot to mention. Wait. Yeah. I'm gonna be on Twitch. I know I've already said this on Half-Life, but no one watches me there. It's really sad. So if you want to watch me on Twitch, you can see it right there. There you go. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye.